Oh man. Uh, why? So oh, how was that? Uh, how was that time twister? The second the, one. The pre- the pretzels. I just feel like uh, they're gonna come up in a minute. Or is this just you want a snack? I, I'm really <laughs> worried like about. No. There's more. I feel like there's more to the pretzels. I don't. I know you're trying to do a thing right now, but the pretzels are really <laughs> throwing me. Because normally you give me so much shit for eating on this podcast, so the fact that you just pull out a big thing of pretzels right now is really fucking throwing me for the loop. That's what I'm proving, audience. Uh huh. Is not only is Ian gluten intolerant, Uh-oh. he's also <laughs> distraction intolerant. <laughs> Yes, we've we've already agreed that I have ADHD for sure. If if more of my opponents just like started doing weird things with their hands during stack resolutions, I would get very much distracted. <laughs> Listen, this is the key to beating Ian at the yeah. next event. If you want to dethrone mm-hmm. the champ, all mm-hmm. you do is just from under the bottom of the, the table pull out a bo- a bag of Schneider's family size pretzels and just start doing this. But uh, I do think we need to uh, address the sorcery in the room. Mm-hmm. And uh, you want a second fucking time twister. It, within a week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you just increased crazy. your net worth by like $10,000 <laughs> in the span of five days. They're not worth uh, that much. But yeah, I mean, it's it's uh it feels pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, one of them has already been sold to the Mana Vault, which is a lovely store owned by a friend of the show, Adam. Uh, so that's pretty sick. Um, yeah. Which, which it does feel good to not have that in my possession anymore. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it is a terrifying thing because they like we literally had security guards there at the at the place just like watching it. <laughs> and Lou had to be like, hi, yeah, I'm his girlfriend. I'm watching it while he takes pictures. He owns this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they were like oh okay so we're good <laughs> like we're, we're good to go <laughs> oh my goodness yeah um but it was well, now you're yeah. really part of the aristocracy Dude, um, i so like i legit people were like fucking with me all week being like us uh, going for number two eh? and i was like yeah okay like sure like never gonna happen and then it like it was just happening uh, and it got like it became closer and closer to reality and then i won my top 16 match and because kinnon has been like I just had such bad luck with Kinnon in the top 16 lately. Just like just Mm -hmm. stuff that's like kind of out of my hands, you know? Um, And then we got to the top four and I was in first seat, which made me feel really good. And I just, I don't know. I felt more confident playing the deck than I ever have. The, the pivot points I think are like huge. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel, I feel more in tune with the meta also than I ever have. Like kind of like, it's very clear, like what to do and how to beat it. Right. I think more than, more than it has been in a minute. Um, so that feels good. It does. Um, yeah, I'm very proud yeah. of you. About it. It also um, doesn't help that I've been playing like good decks, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, like decks that I well, feel th- like that was good. that was the thing that I thought was really funny is yeah. um, like Sean from Woodland Deck House was just like, look at yeah. Ian winning with what isn't the best deck uh, in yeah. quotation marks, and uh, I I just replied to it and I was like, I mean, to be fair. Literally a week ago, we both yeah. went on record saying we thought it was the best. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like it really does feel like, uh, it, 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 at least from from my experience as of right now, Kinnon and Blue Farm are on just like kind of a whole nother level as far as mm-hmm. like that quality, which is not great. I don't like saying that. Um, it feels like there's like just like the minuscule amount of a step, and then you get to like uh, the the other decks that are performing really well, like Sissé Tivit, like all those things. But like yeah. Now that I've done the two t- tournaments with them, just like the level of consistency in these lists is just like insane, yeah. really genuinely. Like <laughs> it's it's very impressive, and I'm very uh, happy that I get to ride off your coattails. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm very proud of you. Congratulations. Um, so today we are putting on our bow ties. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was literally gonna neither of us are wearing the, I, I was looking for one, um, but you know, I still technically have a bunch of moving boxes from my old home, so I, I can tell you where the bow tie is. 
So I don't own a bow tie, but I was considering getting like one of my regular ties and just being like an ass asshole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just like tying just, it into a bow tie shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and then Sam made that tweet last night, and I was like, oh, well, never mind. This, this is the we're we're breaking out the bag of pretzels. Uh, oh, no, what, what was the tweet? The the tweet about the gluten intolerance. Oh oh oh, the, the tweet about the gluten. I thought you meant like uh, something related to what we were talking about. <laughs> Okay, hear me out. Mm -hmm. Because Doctor Seuss or Doctor Seuss, Doctor Who, is uh, a a intellectual property of the uh, the BBC. Mm -hmm. I feel like we should just affect a British accent for the entire episode. Well, you know, I don't want to appropriate their culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know how British people are the most sensitive to appropriation. I'm pretty sure they're the appropriators, if we're being honest. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's why I said Tea, that. curry, you know, those those all definitely didn't start anywhere else. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to be talking about Doctor Who in me. <laughs> I had to get my I, one out. We yeah, can I can't on. even attempt one because I know it's going to just sound really bad. So it's just the closest I can get is a Southern accent, which is the closest you can get. I think it, I, I did hear a chuckle from Lua upstairs, so that one at least got her. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so um, we've got some cards here to talk about today. Um, the set overall was like um, not so like the the one thing I will say about these two universes beyond like commander products is mm-hmm. both of them have been really strong for like commander broadly. But mm-hmm, as far mm-hmm. as CEDH is concerned, both of them have been pretty like fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, like I think, nothing. Yeah. I don't think there's anything like fundamentally busted. I think there's like a lot of really interesting stuff. So like if you yeah. enjoy the IP that like you can definitely find, you know, ways to uh, play it in CEDH. Yeah. I think um, we're even maybe missing a couple on this list right now, just as far as like, um, outlet doctors right like just doctors that somehow make infinite mana when you flicker them or dockside them or or all of that stuff well Um, and then there's like i know neither of us see the appeal of it but there are people that are really high on like the war doctor Um, yeah i'm not as into it i do not get why people like it so much people have been talking about it i I know people are talking about that because of the the ability on the commander i'm not as into it ian isn't as into it so we're not talking about it yeah. um there is one commander that uh i did want to talk about before we got like too deep into mm-hmm. this and yeah. it's the one that i have in the sideboard here in our list mm-hmm. and it's specifically the pairing of barbara white with the fourth doctor mm-hmm. um and so for those at home barbara white is a colorless and a white human advisor legendary human advisor that's a one three that has doctor's companion so you can have two commanders if the other is the doctor specifically Mm -hmm. this is an important thing before we get too far for the doctors it can't be a changeling it has to be a specifically in the type line time lord doctor Um, and changelings while they are all those things are not the doctor it's like an immutable thing that yeah it's like a commander has. right yeah like the quality of it for sure it's a quality sure. of the really thing yeah uh i think it's a little confusing it's not super intuitive in my opinion i um, for sure agree <laughs> i think they could have put very easily just put on the card is the doctor or like mm-hmm. you know something like that but i, I regardless uh, yeah. So Barbara White is a companion and has the ability sagas you control have read ahead uh, and then paired with the fourth doctor, which costs two colorless, a green and a blue uh, is a four, four time Lord doctor. And it says you may look at the top card of your library at any time. And once each turn, you may play a historic land or cast a historic spell from the top of your library when you do create a food. I specifically wanted to talk about this pairing because we have been talking about on the show for the last few weeks, uh, like this idea of green in like 
how you use land in green mm-hmm. and how to like maybe a lands type deck in CEDH uh, and how to like view green with a different angle. And sure. one of the things that I saw about this originally was I was like, oh, this could make a really cool loam deck. Uh, and specifically because of the fact that it makes Saga a free to the battle, or Urza Saga a free to the battlefield tutor. So it makes Urza Saga really, really strong. Um, free so, in the sense that you skip your land drop, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you can do that, but you can also use like uh, crop rotation as a sure. one mana, like instant speed tutor, which is really mm-hmm. cool um, for like, you know, a graph digger's cage or, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever piece you might need in a certain situation. I was going to give you shit because it is a one. It is a one mana piece. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like specifically for like an artifact yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so I think like I, I obviously it's a very rough idea. It's not like something that I think is going to shock the meta. But we were we've been talking about this mm-hmm. for a few weeks now. And uh, when I saw this get spoiled, I was like, oh, that might be interesting. And um, is something that uh, I have not looked into yet, but I was kind of waiting for all the cards to get spoiled to see like mm-hmm. what the best doctor pairing was. And I was kind of like, all right, the fourth doctor seems like it's the best just because you get the most like value out of it. Mm. Um, but uh Overall, I was just kind of like, this seems compelling from the angle of like what we have been exploring on this podcast with Green. Right. Yeah. Um, hmm. It's really interesting. I think the the green <laughs> cards that I'm seeing from the set uh, are doing what I think is the best thing in green right now, which is tutoring Dockside. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like. There's several doctors and, and some companions here that you've, we put to the side that are like, oh, hey, look, these, these are dockside outlets, um, mm-hmm. which is, I think, the best thing to be doing in green right now. Unfortunately, just tutoring creatures is is it. Um, yeah. And that's it's, it's a weird thing to say, too, right? Like the color combination that like was very, very strong in the format for quite some time just now is just like, a, OK, if your colors have a busted creature, I guess green's worth your time, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, it's also a good splash color. I, you know, I will say, like, I think we talked about this a little bit last week, like things like a broken mm-hmm. case, stuff like that, Eladomri's call. Like, those are those are good things to have that have green in them, but aren't necessarily green, right? Right. The other thing that I, I like about this doing green, like this, like pairing mm-hmm. for Bant, is yeah. that it does something in Bant that is different from what Bant usually does, mm-hmm. but also doesn't push you away from what the colors do well if that makes sense right. uh like, and i think that's like one of the the biggest struggles i've always had with when trying mm-hmm. to blur brew band uh, i've talked about yeah. this before where like arden thrasios is really hard because what it ends up being is that uh green is your splash you have to decide if green or blue is your splash color and right. that pulls you in two very different directions Mm -hmm. um and whereas with this i look at this and i'm like oh i can see how each of the colors contribute to this strategy very Mm -hmm. clearly um if that's an effective strategy i i don't really know yeah Uh, but it's it's something Mm -hmm. that i wanted to bring up specifically because we have been talking about it yeah Um, yeah yeah but i i do do agree with you on all of those points is that mm-hmm. green is uh, kind of in that weird spot of, you know, tutors dock side. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's it, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You, you should be g- glad to know that I did um, not include the card that is going to be an art and Silas, the new mm-hmm. equipment that uh, whenever it like you, equip it to a creature and uh whatever that creature's name is when it dies you search for basically a copy of that but what Mm -hmm. you can do is now you can play the like name changing card uh or excuse Uh me it changes the name of the 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 card that it attaches to uh but then you can play i forget what the blue card is called 
but basically yeah, the, it, press card, the higher was trying to make work a while ago. Yeah, yeah. But you can, you can do that really well in Arden because Arden cheats some of that. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I don't yeah, know. It's, I, I, I don't know if it's like worth it's it, like but in my head the for one kind of fringe strategy. Like, well, my thought was, is that if you're doing that, it's just like additional win con access because it's taking up. It's yeah. just like, two more like another copy of thoracle another copy of dc effectively yeah um and so like i don't know that those are like again i didn't really bring it up to be like a thing let's talk deeply about Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. but it is a card that uh, i will be probably testing and so looking at the commanders that we are talking about today um Mm -hmm. that we are specifically putting on this list um, let's start off uh, with the very first one, the the the, the cheapest of all of them. So well, uh, yeah, let's, so we we talked about a little bit. I just think like before we go into this, the, sure. the fact that the the doctors com- like pair with companions, right? So right. in ineffectiveness, it is like a very it, also super smart design. I think it's uh, very well designed. It's like partner, but within this limited scope, um, right. sort of like the Friends Forever thing was too, right? I really enjoy this dynamic because it's not partner with, right? Which is mm-hmm. very limiting, um, but it's not uh, it's not just partner, which just ruins everything, <laughs> right? So right. I think it's it's clever. I like the way they did it. I like that there's still that level of customization where you can be like, oh, well, I have yes. Rose Tyler and, and the first Doctor. And it's like, that, what, that never happened on the show. Right. Uh, but, you know, time travel. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I think that's really cool. I just think it's like a really unique uh, way to do it. I, I just I like the design. But all that being said, for CEDH, that probably means that Cal and I are going to miss one of the, I don't know, hundreds of possible combinations <laughs> right. uh, of these things, which is a great thing to uh, go down to the comment section below and leave a comment on because, uh, yes. you know, some of this stuff is really cool and we'd love to hear about it. And while you're down there, go ahead and click subscribe and the like button. Because mm-hmm. you know. it lets YouTube know that you both like and are willing to subscribe to this channel. <laughs> and you want to see more of this content. Yeah. Yes. Um, right. <laughs> but part, part of why uh, the, way that we're, the way that I separated like Barbara White and mm-hmm. uh, the, what was it, the fifth doctor or fourth yeah. doctor um, okay. out was specifically, I was like, I wanted to talk about these within this combo. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas Mm -hmm. the rest of these, I think that you could, you know, come up with. with. Yeah, yeah, there's some variation that is uh, there. Um, So let's look at the first one here on our list, which is Mm -hmm. Adric, Mathematical Genius. I'm going to tell you right now, I know nothing about Doctor Who, really. Um, Mm -hmm. So all of this is just like, I know Daleks. I know yeah. uh I know what's his face the the guy who is uh who who is the doctor that everybody really liked Oh David Tennant Yeah I know David Tennant but yeah, barely yeah. clearly Yeah um that that is my knowledge of Doctor Who I have I've watched yeah. a little bit but I've obviously retained none of yeah. it Yeah uh, I I've watched Doctors 9 10 and 11 so that was that's yeah Yeah then, then I stopped. I watched a the, little bit of twelve, but like it, it really the the, the Moffat takeover really lost me. But. Yeah, I I have always been kind of a fan of as far as like British sci fi goes, mm-hmm. a fan of this like really. It, it's not very big or well known, but it's called Blake's Seven, and it's fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. It was like an old TV show back in the day, but it eventually got rebooted into like an audio drama and okay. it has like Patrick or uh, what is it? Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is in it and like uh-huh. all of these things. And it's just like it's like a uh, commentary on fascism and rebellion and all of this stuff. But it's so good and well written. Um, yeah. But it's like you have to be specifically really into science fiction and really mm-hmm. into audio dramas to even know of its existence right, uh, right which tends which hey look i am the venn diagram of this uh, right right <laughs> but yeah benedict cumberbatch was in uh, a few of those mm-hmm. uh like 
audio drama things that they mm-hmm. did and mm-hmm. it's just it's great um Sick. but anyhow let's look at adric mathematical genius uh, Adric is a human artificer that costs a uh, colorless and a blue and is a 1-1 one, one with the two activated abilities. The first one costs two generic and a blue. You tap it and copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. The second ability is a generic and a blue. You sacrifice Adric and counter target activated or triggered ability. This is I the love one that this one does not have tap for the second. Ability. Yes. I love that. That is, I think you can like use the first half and then do the second half too. Yeah. Sick. And it can <laughs> even just come down and you can use the second half anyway. Right away. Right. It's right, right. just like, it's so versatile. I really like it. Yeah. Um, this is the one that I think is probably the most like this combos, like really fucking easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like, just off the top of my head, like what are some of the, or off the top of your head, like what are some of the things that this could combo with? Uh, so for me, like, I mean, the, the pretty obvious one is like just double dockside is like super sick. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's like, I, I, I don't know the, the stifle on the stick part for me was like kind of insane. Right. Because a lot of the doctors that I think are like pretty good, um, I, either a, already have blue in the color identity but or be like they want to add blue right and there's there's mm-hmm. one combination that i'm very excited about which is a doctor we're talking about later called the fugitive doctor in this one um because that one's gruel and this is blue and i think that mm. the teamer combo of the two of them is like pretty fucking hot i'm not gonna lie yeah uh and then just the yeah the stifle on the stick is is really awesome defensively and then i just think there's so many like easy ways to get incidental value um i know people are talking about this with sisse I like the idea of this with Sissé. I don't know just because of how squishy it is. Like he's a little one one, which is a little awkward. In, in the Bowmasters um, meta, that is a little awkward. But I also love that he comes down early and turns on your SWATs and your guardianships and your mox right. numbers, right? Like I think uh unless I'm mistaken, like you can play companions first, right? You don't need the doctor out. Yeah. Uh, so like having a, a two drop because I know people were talking about the dog, K9, which I don't think has made our list. Um no, it didn't. But like because it's a one drop that comes down and turns on like all of those things. Right. And I think, you know, same, it's the, the Thrasios thing we always say, right. Like turns on those, those cars and that, that ends up being pretty, pretty sweet. Right. Um, but yeah, are there any abilities you were thinking about particularly get kind of busted with this or I know it does like stuff with strionic resonator, if I'm correct. Uh, like, um, is it strionic resonator or is it, um, I can't remember what it is now. I know like those like Brago type combos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Brago things... is the card. Yeah, 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 but it can do a lot of the like Brago esque combos. Uh, yeah. Because it does the like Strionic mm-hmm. Resonator doubling. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, I, I've i thought about it in that regard. I think mm-hmm. overall as a companion, uh, yeah. I'm pretty like. I think it also like creates some interesting scenarios i think where you like if it has if it doesn't have summoning sickness i think it can turn like an etb into a a win con with isochron scepter you know what i mean like so if it's like etb ping you can be like all right i'm gonna copy that isochron scepter on tap but ping it you know what i mean copy 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 Mm -hmm. copy forever which i think is kind of sick um i don't know how often that'll come up but (laughs) i guess that is a scepter outlet yeah if you really 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 (laughs) squint at it yeah squint hard at it um yeah, like you can do that stuff. Uh, I, I think the the issue is is it's like what are the uh, you know activated or triggered abilities that you're really wanting to copy for three mana is kind mm-hmm. of my question. Yeah. Um, I do think the like, you know, it's it's kind of that question of would you play Stronic Resonator, you know, mm. or yeah. that ability. And mm-hmm. I feel like most of the time we would say no, but I do also think that we might change our opinion on that if it's in the command zone and yeah. also not the main commander. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's the thing. You know, like, I don't know. There's, there's definitely some room to like play stupid things, right? Like, like seven mana Atali and stuff like that. Like, I don't right. think that's necessarily what you want to be doing with this deck, but like it, it is something you can do. I think right. like there's a sort of just this this sort of free nature of this card, which is why I like it. Like I don't think it's like we're playing this not because it, it itself is fundamentally busted. It's just like 
uh, if I want a backup commander, this is going to be that thing, right? Like, it's like, you know, everyone's always like, oh, I wish Vile Smasher didn't just basically have flavor text. This is what I think of when I think of what the secondary yeah. commander should look like, right? It's it's this, right? Yeah, this is a really good, like, commander that does a thing, isn't, like, too broken. Yeah, um, yeah. But, like, does an interesting thing. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But overall, I'm like, I think it's fine. I yeah. I think most of the companions, the only one I'm really excited about, honestly, is Barbara White. And I think that's just because I really like sagas. Um, yeah. But uh, the next companion here on this list is mm-hmm. Martha Jones. It is a she is a human cleric that is a three two that costs two generic and a blue and mm-hmm. has two different abilities. One is when she enters the battlefield, you investigate. And the second is whenever you sacrifice a clue, Martha Jones and up to one other target creature can't be blocked this turn. This Yeah, this is one of the only reasons I want to play the War Doctor ever is yeah. because you then have a Just Guy infinite mana deck. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's so that's the idea, right? The ETB clone is like anytime you do a Dockside combo or a combo that requires you bouncing creatures, right? Right. Uh, you suddenly then have Martha there. He's like, oh, here's a clue. Here's a clue. Here's a clue. Here's a clue. Right. And then, you know, boom, infinite clues is uh, yeah. infinite draws and infinite game. Right. Right. So. I also um, really like this as a 99 card potentially in like uh, potentially something like Tivit where you may you give your clues like additional. Um, you give your clues like some additional utility to where it kind of can make that tivet math a little bit easier. Um, and yeah. also I don't know if it's like good enough to make the cut, but it's one of the things that I, you know, saw and was like, Oh, that might be worth like trying out and seeing how it does. Hi, Lewis hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't know that like I think it's good enough to make the cut, but it was one of those things that like piqued my interest and I was like, oh, yeah. that might be interesting. Yeah. Um Yeah. Someone was also talking to me about um Sir Ginger and Tivit this weekend, which I thought was really interesting because they basically okay. were like, Yeah, every, you, you basically every time you crack a clue, you're scrying you, you turn the clues into Thrasios activations, right? Right. And then it also puts counters on ginger, which is just like a clock. Which I thought was kind of interesting. It was, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but like it was definitely a, a pitch to me in a very convincing way this weekend. <laughs> Where it made you think about it, right? Like, Yeah, exactly. exactly. I, and I, I think the reason I like this specifically, though, is it's like, oh, and one other target creature can't be blocked. Oh, Tivit can't be no. blocked. Okay, cool. So now we're just it's we're just feeding the machine. And mm-hmm. uh, it, it feels like a thing that once you get that online, it's going to be really hard to deal with. Mm-hmm. um i agree i just don't so, like tivit being blocked is not normally an issue i deal with it's well yes and also i've had a lot of experiences where Atrax is getting played a lot malcolm's getting played mm-hmm. a lot like a crom is getting played a lot where it's yeah. sometimes you're just kind of like and people are being smart and holding up their croms mm-hmm. um where you're just kind of like i can't get anywhere um so right. you kind of have to like this is a thing where i see this as like a if this is something you expect to see it right. might be worth considering um okay. yeah so uh but also with the war doctor i think is a it is an interesting companion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah i don't know like what specific companion pairs you want to make with this one but like you know whatever your favorite doctor is as long as it has red, you now have Dockside combos. Right. I mean, even um, the Fugitive it, Doctor with this is like interesting, yeah. right? It it also um it also combos with dual caster ghostly flicker, which is kind of cool. Cause you um you put <laughs> ghostly flicker on the stack, you copy a dual caster, you copy the dual caster, and you copy her, right? Right. Infinitely, and then you pivot to start floating infinite mana with the dual casters, right? And then you just draw your deck. Oh, that's that's sick. Yeah, yeah, right. I love that. <laughs> cool. Instant speed win. Like, not bad. <laughs> um, or instant speed draw your deck. Right, right, right. Not win. <laughs> uh, next card on our list is River Song. Mm-hmm. It is a human time lord rogue that is a two-two that costs a generic, a blue, and a red, and has two different abilities. One, you draw cards from the bottom of your library rather than the top. 
And mm-hmm. whenever an opponent scries, surveils, or searches their library, put a plus one plus one counter on River Song. Then River Song yep. deals damage to a player equal to its power. Uh, I really dislike this card. I understand really? from what I have been told that it's very flavorful. Um, mm-hmm. I, yes, I, I I don't like the like dexterity like Mm -hmm. thing to it where it's like it kind of adds like another layer of difficulty to playing the game uh but like other than that it's kind of interesting what what are your thoughts on it yeah i think there's um yeah i didn't even think about the dexterity thing i think there's a way where you do it where you like pick it up slide it and then don't flip it until you like know for a fact it's the bottom card you know what i mean right um but I um <clears throat> I like this card. Mm-hmm. Uh and it, it, so I am definitely partial to this because it combos with my one of my you know top favorite magic cards of all time, Times Your Navigator. Um it just <laughs> two card infinite combo, right? right? Um so for those who don't know time stream, you can pay for activate it, put it in the bottom, take an extra turn, right? So uh you don't necessarily win with that combo. You make infinite turns. Um because you need some way to either like draw or like deal damage to your opponents. I guess if River gets big enough, you just beat the shit out of your opponents right. until they die. Um, but it's uh, it's just clean. It's a nice clean two card. Is it combo right? You can right. you can play your back to basics and your blood moons and all of that thing. And then it leaves like a lot of design space just kind of open. Um, to be honest, I haven't done enough research with cards that just say like bottom of library. Um, and I think it's like, I just feel like there's more to it. I know there's obviously the cards that are like, um, yeah, some like really interesting ones, like the polymorph cards become really mm-hmm. interesting in that circumstance because like, uh, first of all, you can like just polymorph into your time stream navigator. Right. Mm-hmm. But then, um, the staff, which its name is not coming to me at the moment. Oh, Proteus. Poly- staff. Proteus staff. Yeah. yeah. Um, that does not say, to randomize the cards in the bottom of your library right so if you use that even if it's just like a value one until you flip over a creature you then get x amount of cards revealed right right and you get to then basically like doomsday stack the bottom of your deck for everything that was revealed right right which is pretty sick i think i think that there's like you a lot of first grade. do that with like dig through time right because like dig through yeah. time does that as well where it doesn't tell you to randomize it uh yes there's a couple that do that i know um you know anticipate impulse uh there's just like a number of these cards that say like and then tuck to the bottom of your library well it also just makes like scrying like really good right like so i think it just reverses scrying what it reverses scrying right because you have to like put the cards to the bottom as opposed to right but that's what i'm saying is so it's like you're basically like looking at your bottom two cards and going, do I want to? So like, let's, let's take a card like preordained, right? So you mm-hmm. scry, look at the top two cards of your library. Yeah. Um, do I want to draw anything? And then, yeah. but you would draw from the bottom. So whatever one you want, you're, you can put it down there. Or if you don't want either, you just leave them there and then you draw. That's what it um, does normally. It, it's basically the same thing, but it does make it so that like, I guess it doesn't really change anything. It doesn't change anything. Know. It just reverses where you put them. <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> I thought I had found something interesting, but <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, uh, but then there's like I know there's like Conjurer's Bobble, which is like right. sack it, put a one card from your graveyard to the bottom of your library, draw a card, and like if you have a way to recur that, then like you could take infinite turns by like putting a time warp there. You know, right. um, I think there's like there's a lot of really cute weird stuff you can do. Um, and then I, I I just, I don't know. I feel like there's, there's stuff there that is pretty sick and I don't like have all of the math figured out. You know what I mean? Um, but even like expressive iteration, which is like you put one in your hand, one, uh, or is, yeah, you put one in the bottom of your library, right? Yeah. Put one in the bottom of your library and then one in exile. Right. So like, that's like effectively just like, okay, make sure I control my top deck and then put two cards in my hand. Right. right. And like, worst case scenario, you exile the one you don't want. Right. Um. Yeah, I. Uh, I I don't know. There, there's, there's, there's something there. Is is kind of the idea, yeah. right? Like there is something 
there. And I think it's also just like uh, on on the base level, there is a two card combo with it. And the rest of the deck keeps it nice and flexible. It's also just like it's a hate bear in the command zone, right? Like the right. amount of times like because I think you put. Let me just double check the exact wording on on her. But yeah, you, you put a one on counter on her. Then she deals damage to that player equal to, equal to its power. So the first person to search their library with her on the battlefield gets bolted. Right. And it only goes up from there, right? Like, yeah. Interesting um, uh, card that can also go with uh, this that's really good is it makes like mm-hmm. experimental augury and impulse like a lot better. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like you get to then stack the bottom of your deck, right? right. Um, and then also I think there's... There are cards that say like each player scries. Right. Right. It also makes so, brainstorm not lock you. Yeah. Right. Because you're mm-hmm. putting them on top of your library instead of the bottom. Right. So right. you draw three. Okay. What are my worst two cards? I'm putting those here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's like, it's like having brainstorm and the shuffle in one. Right. right. It, so like it's, it, it's a really interesting card, right? right. Like I, I, and I then think you can it, also it play stuff it. like, uh, this is also interesting <laughs> where like, so I'm just looking at EDA trick with like cards that yeah. people are playing with it. It's like reality chip with this is really interesting because you can you draw from the bottom, but then you can play off the top. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That's actually really interesting. Uh what else is in here? Oh fucking, of course, Dockside Extortionist is good. Thank you uh, for telling me yeah. what I already <laughs> no, know. Oh, thank you so much. Oh wow, this is this is shocking. I did not know this. <laughs> um you know it's stuff like that though uh that i think is interesting that actually yeah you had me like at first when i saw this card i was like this seems kind of memey but then now that we've talked about it i'm kind of like all right maybe this is better than i'm giving it credit for so yeah. like, it, it does make the like uh the like future site type cards mm-hmm. really good because they yeah. are then just actual factual card advantage right right um which i think is interesting Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's like it's actually pretty sick i think uh, so unfortunately it it seems like all of the the effects that allow your opponents to scry are all may effects uh which is very sad because like i really like the idea of like you playing a card that says your opponents have to scry and then like you deal three four and five damage but that's apparently not a thing which is a little sad (laughs) This is where if Riversong had access to white, stuff like Path to Exile and Winds of Abandon would just be like broken. Uh yeah. cuz you could just be like I'm going to make you search uh how many creatures well, did you have? Four searches. There's Field of Ruin, which is uh Yeah, Field thing, of Ruin right? would do that. So you can yeah. hit a problematic land and then you make everybody search because it's not a And that's three separate triggers too, right. which is like and so- if you've never triggered her, that's three, four, and five damage. And the other cool part about that is the fact that uh, you will probably be the only person at the table playing basics. Yeah. So you're going to go up a land, you took somebody down a land, and then you dealt like at mo like three, four, five, so three, seven, twelve damage across mm-hmm. three people. Yeah. Like, that's... God damn it. <laughs> Cool. This is actually cool. pretty compelling. God damn. Cool. It also makes stuff like uh, <laughs> Valica Awakening really interesting. Uh, Valica Awakening. It's Which the one, one where you put any number of cards oh. from the, your hand on the bottom of your library, then you draw that yeah, many yeah, cards yeah, plus one. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm just looking through here at like different things you can do with it. Wait, wouldn't that just lock you? No, you would draw one. You and it's instant speed draw one. It's like not yeah. that great, but you can like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is way more interesting than I wanted it to be. God damn it! How dare you? Hell yeah. Um, the the absolute gall. It also makes this is kind of interesting. It also makes like miracle cards kind of interesting. Um, does it? Well, so with the so 
you're presumably playing a lot of the like impulse experimental oh, I, sort of okay yeah yeah yeah, you yeah, yeah, them yeah, yeah and then you stack them on the bottom of your card it also makes stuff like yeah. sleight of hand really good right so um, Yo, sleight of hand is sick with this card. I'm yeah, like sleight of hand is yeah, yeah, actually yeah. nuts with this. But uh, like, yeah, I'm looking yeah. through here at like what the people like what people are doing with it, and there's a lot of miracle cards in here, along with the, uh, you know, you can put stuff wherever, um, type right. stuff. And right. I was like, oh, that like at first it was kind of like, why is that good? Just like you were. And then it like kind of clicked that, oh, okay, that makes sense because you can stack your deck however you want. And, right. you know, you can just place these on the bottom. Uh, yeah. So it makes like Devastation Tide a lot better. It makes Temporal yeah. Mastery a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. You know, insert Miracle card here. So, I, I, you know what? I actually think there's something here. Bonfire of the Damned. Um, yeah. <laughs> I heard you having. Oh, there's also like. There's also stuff you can do with Tell Jalad Stylus as well, right? Uh, which is just literally a one minute artifact that says put target permanent you own on the bottom of your library. Yeah, I, I just saw that like, too. Yeah, yeah. That's also like weird. interesting to Fairy's Puzzle Box potential deck. Yes, uh, I, I saw that's that kind of fun. Well. Yeah, right. Like this is like it's sick, right? There's a lot of weird stuff. Um, I don't know, like I, I, you know, at the end of the day, this could be nothing and just like a bad two card combo, right? But like, I like the fact that there's multiple like components to the card, right? So there is the draw from the bottom stuff, which right. has like certain levels of like things are busted, things are weird. You can try to change it up. Then there's also this like you can force your opponents to search, um, and like stuff like that. So like I, I think that part's pretty sick as well, you know. The cyber controller, G Willikers. Yeah, it's a 3-3 three, three legendary artifact creature with the creature type Cyberman. I hate that that's a creature type. So nah, deeply. man, Cyberman. There's I fucking, fucking hate that. Uh, it costs X uh, generic, two blue, and a black. It has an ETB ability that says when Cyber Controller enters the battlefield, each opponent mills X cards. Put all creature cards milled this way onto the battlefield face down under your control they are two two cyberman artifact creatures and it also has the static ability when uh, other artifact creatures you control get plus one plus one um so it's you know a cool way to build up like a little army of dudes mm -hmm. and also is a lord um but this in like blue black is really interesting mm -hmm. because you can do some kind of stupid stuff with this i mean i just like it as like a it's it's one of the cheaper just like blue black infinite mana outlets that exist mm -hmm. in these colors that aren't like i don't know it's kind of the the downside is like if you cast it for a fair value and then don't have it in the command zone like you don't mill all your opponents out right which right. is a little, a little stinky but like um I don't know. It just seems like a really fun design. I like, you know, any, anytime there is a Demir commander with the infinite mana outlet stapled onto it, it's just kind of like, okay, it's a thing. It, the, the This is the new Demir Scepter deck, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's ever, mm -hmm. I feel like we need to have a little bit on every show where it's like, you know how we have like, is this a Najeela card? card? Yeah, yeah. Um, we need to have, is this the new Scepter outlet? Uh, yeah. Because I feel like every set there's a new commander where we're like, I mean, if you, it's if you. Demir, right? Like, yeah. Those black scepter outlets are just abundant. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's always funny though, because like, I feel like every single set we, we have this conversation yeah. of like, mm -hmm. look, I mean, it, it's kind of a Scepter outlet and. Yeah. When was the last time you put Dramatic Scepter in a deck? Oh, God, I can't even remember. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I think it's like it's probably underplayed in Adnos strategies. Um, yeah. I would agree with that. But that like, I know there are people who are going to be like, <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? And it's like, OK, but it's it's so clean post Nas when you don't have Underworld Breach, like the ability mm -hmm. to just be like, oh, form colorless mana. I win the game is like mm -hmm. so easy, so easy. No, it's very good. And I think like if you're going to like if you're going to do like those doomsday 
Like mm-hmm. I, I would play that before I would play Doomsday and the like yeah, Tim yeah. and Malcolm sort of thing. <laughs> right. But that's a whole other I could probably talk about underplayed cards for a whole episode. We probably insert should. future future episode here. Um mm-hmm. <laughs> uh let's look at the next cyberman i really mm-hmm. just hate that this is a creature type um a shod the lone cyberman is a three mm-hmm. three legendary artifact cyberman creature that costs a generic blue black and red and it says the first on legendary artifact spell you cast each turn has casual casualty two which is that uh mechanic back from uh what was it uh Treats. Streets of New Capenna. Mm-hmm. And the second, the other ability it has is whenever you sacrifice another creature, put a plus one plus one counter on a shod. So this can come in. You're able to cast, you know, whatever your mana crypts and such. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you, you specifically requested this. So yeah, I, yeah. I was curious what you were thinking with it. This is one of those cards that I. <sighs> To me, it has a lot of the right text, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think we've talked about this on other set reviews I've been on where it's like, I don't have an answer yet. I think Oswald Fiddlebender was like the first one where this got brought up, um, where it's like, it's not there. Or maybe Mm -hmm. it is there and I don't know it. But there is going to be things that break this card, I think. I think it has a lot of really solid text that can probably be channeled into an ability that's pretty strong. I also, is, yeah, I like this, is this the KCI deck? Is this the KCI <laughs> no, deck? <laughs> I don't think this is the KCI deck, but as much <laughs> as I would love it for it to be. I just think like it's got some strong text on it, and uh, I, I really don't have much more than that, but I, I, I think it is a card that there are people who I know this is going to scratch a certain itch for them as far as brewing mm-hmm. is concerned, and I think it has potential to be a CEDH card because of that. Yeah. This feels... Kind of reminds me a little bit of like Angelo, but is right, uh, right. You know, artifact, obviously so. for artifact spells, which mm-hmm. is inter- interesting design space. Um, yeah, I also think like just Grixis artifacts mid range stacks is like an underexplored archetype. Well, we saw that uh, somebody played that at uh, what was it at Lotus Con over the weekend, mm-hmm. right? If somebody mm-hmm. played the what was it, the uh, Goro Goro deck. Yeah, yeah, the Goro Goro deck, and I saw them share it, and I was like, oh, this is actually really sweet. I like the idea behind this of, you know, uh, dealing, you know, you lock your opponents down, and then you have this thing that just, like, slowly puts pressure on everybody, or, you know, rapidly puts pressure, and they have to (laughs) continuously deal with things. Oh, and you're also in blue, so you just have great, like... Counter magic. Yeah, Yeah. you have the ability to to defend it. So, yeah, I, I actually think that's an interesting strategy. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the face of Bo. It is a generic, or it's an alien advisor that costs zero, or that is a zero four, costs a generic blue, red, and white, and has the activated tap ability that says you may cast a spell with suspend from your hand. If you do, pay its suspend cost rather than its mana cost. You can only uh, activate as a sorcery. So. This is an interesting com- uh, card. It's an interesting mm-hmm. commander. Um, my first like, uh, like gut thought with this when I saw it and you requested this card was, well, I mean, how many good like suspend cards mm-hmm. on there? And then I Googled it and I was like, oh, restore balance is great. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, oh, ancestral vision and uh, mm-hmm. wheel of fate and... Uh, suddenly this card got a lot more interesting. Yep, 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 uh, yep, yep, so yep. <laughs> what are what are your thoughts on this uh, as a potential Jeskai deck? Yeah, so like, I mean, the, the most obvious thing is like the cards that are going to be like very, very good in it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know. You can play uh, balance, cheaper balance. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the big one is like, Balance in the command zone with one tutor is like <clears throat> not bad, right? Um, you also get to play cards like Lotus Bloom just as like kind of free if you're yep. like sort of running, you know, out of advantage. Um, there's, I don't know if you want to ever go Enchantress, but there's Resurgent Belief to get all your enchantments back. Mm-hmm. I mean, so let's, let's talk about Restore Balance because for those who don't know, it's uh, each player chooses a number of lands they control, equal number of lands controlled by the player who controls the fewest, then sacrifices the rest. 
players play sac or players sacrifice creatures and discard cards the same way. Okay. So mm -hmm. lands, creatures, and right. There's a couple card types not mentioned there, right? So those those who are unfamiliar with balance strategies in older formats, uh, the idea is you like dump your handful of artifacts, play your face of bow, and you're like, oh, what am I gonna do? And everyone's like, what does this deck do? And then you're like, okay, cool. Now that all my artifacts are the same and I've dumped my hand, um, and also this Rhystic studies here, but that that's not mentioned on this card, isn't it? Weird. Uh, and then you you play your restore balance, and then suddenly everyone's like, wait a minute, but you dumped your hand a second ago. Why, what are you doing, stinker? And you're like, oh, well, you actually notice you really didn't play many lands. It's just a lot of artifacts. And you're like, oh, weird. Uh, <laughs> there's oh, also man. The, um, I, I have one card in hand. I guess we'll all have to di uh, go yeah, down to yeah. one card. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah, going to play exactly. my land now. Uh, <laughs> mm hmm Good old yeah. restore balance modern restore deck. Balance. That was such a good deck, man. <laughs> it was terrible, but it was great. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also like the the are they cloud post or whatever that the you yeah. pay one, you bounce a land for an artifact. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a mana yeah, rock. Yeah. yeah. So like they they're basically these mana rocks that have an alternate casting cost, uh, where you pay one and bounce a land instead of paying their normal cost, which is like normally like one and two of two colors. Mm -hmm. Um so there's enough of these cards that is like, okay. I mean, restore balance is the big one, obviously, and you can definitely build a strategy around that. Um, and then, you know, if you're already sort of doing this, like no creatures, no lands kind of thing, you can play cards like wildfire and stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. um, you get a wheel for two mana wheel of fate, uh, which doesn't suck, but it's not, you know, the best card in the entire world. But um, you know, uh, the, the restore balance thing is like the big thing. And uh, I think there are definitely people who are smart enough to brew around cards like that. There's also the the crazy new one from the set that's um, what is it here? It's uh, exile the top three cards of your library. You can play those until the end of turn, and then put four time counters on each of those cards that has suspend. So like, if they have suspend, you suspend them. But if not, you just get to draw three for one red. And then there's also the draw three for one blue. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, um, right. Yeah, there's also like Deep Sea Kraken, which is just like a three mana unblockable six six. Right. <laughs> which I don't think is like the end all be all, but you know. Yeah, it, it it's interesting. Um I don't know that like I think the card that will probably people will see immediately. Uh I think that stuff like Greater Gargadon mm -hmm. is a card that immediately jumps to mind. Um I think yeah. that you could potentially <clears throat> I have not blown this horn in a second, so get ready. I mm -hmm. need to dust it off. Uh, but you can do some silly stuff with both rectors uh, in this deck, yeah. too. Uh, and you're in yeah, a very you sacrifice too. Yeah, so them. you have uh, stuff that you can um, you know, sacrifice to Greater Gargadon. Mm -hmm. uh, you have glimpse of tomorrow where you can shuffle permanence and like uh if you have some way of well i guess you can't really do anything like that but you could really mess up some people's strategies with glimpse of tomorrow mm -hmm. uh inevitable betrayal just go take a card from yeah, their deck go take Even the reality side. Strobe, i think is kind of cute which is like uh you pay two in a blue you bounce a permanent and then it comes back in three turns and you bounce another right. permanent. you know Oh, actually, yeah. uh, Riftwing Cloudscape also does the same thing, um, but I oh, it doesn't. It doesn't re-exile itself. But there's like yeah. a lot of cute ones, you know. Um, there's also the one for one in a red where you add a red for each card and target opponent's hand until the end of turn. And you don't lose it as it steps and phases in. Just like, and then comes back at a different turn. Just like, sure, I'll get a free or two mana ritual that probably yeah. adds five to seven. Another Jessica's will. Yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of cool stuff and like. Again, my first thought was, well, I mean, how many how many things are there? And there is, especially with this new set, there's like a pretty decent amount of stuff that's like, all right, well, gonna there's, some yeah, right. there's some reasonable cards here. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Obviously, like the, the main thing is you build around restore balance and then kind of yeah. go from there, right? Yeah. It is a restore balance deck. I think that also probably doing something with at minimum academy rector is reasonable just because you yeah. have that easy access to mm -hmm. uh what's what's the card um 
resurgent belief. So like, yeah. I think that makes a reasonable amount of sense. So, mm -hmm. and there's, um, there's other cards that say like cards in your hand gain suspend. And I wonder if it's like that would allow you to then cast them for the bow cost. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that works, but I'd be um, interested to hear that. Yeah. That's, I feel like it should, but I'm not sure. Again, uh, release notes would be able to answer that. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like the way it interacts, though, with like Mox Tantalite, Lotus Bloom, mm -hmm. uh, Mox uh, or Soul Talisman, all yeah, those yeah. things. So, like, mm -hmm. makes those a lot better. Uh, really wish this mm -hmm. could be have black in it, though, because, like, yeah. what a Nas deck, right? Yeah, like, okay, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, what a Nas deck. <laughs> yeah. That would be sick. Yeah, yeah, my my CMC is zero. Uh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know we missed the Yogmoth's will and we missed the profane tutor and like uh yeah. Yeah. You kind of miss out on some of the really good like suspend cards yeah. when you're in Jeskai, but I think mm -hmm. it, it's obviously intentional. Yeah, uh, but... I think it's also like really interesting because like you get an extra wheel, right? So like you already have access to the most wheels and the best wheels in, in the colors right now of like right. wheel, windfall, um, wheel, uh, misfortune and time twister, right? Mm -hmm. So then you get wheel of whatever fate. Yeah. Um, and you know, the so smothering tithe doesn't care if you restore balance, uh, you know, Narset doesn't care if you restore balance, right? Like, yeah. like these are starting to be some payoffs, and uh, Breach doesn't care if you restore balance either, right? So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of sick. I, I think it, it might be a little more cute. There's also a world where you like only play basics too, right? Because if you're already mm -hmm. like nuking a bunch of lands, and you like you play a bunch of basic lands, you play all these artifacts that make your mana, and then you just you land hate the shit out of people. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's absolutely like I think that this is not a breach deck. I don't think it does any of that stuff. It is a stacks deck. It is a yeah, restore sure. balance deck. Yeah. And I honestly have been dying for a balance. Like, honestly, I wish balance was legal in this format yeah. so badly. Yeah. Uh, but if you could play the Magus uh, too, probably, right? You could probably just play the Magus. Like, I, I, yeah. I know that, uh, like, Charles played it in Ow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, yeah. I, I think it's, you, you could easily make mm -hmm. an argument for it here. For so, sure. Um, yeah, it seems sick. Uh, I don't know. Let's brew. We should do a brew. brewing episode. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'll do a let's, basic, basic brew. The, uh, the next card on our list is the fifth doctor. It is a 2-2 two -two Time Lord doctor that costs two generic, a blue and a white. So it's part of my guild. It is the fifth doctor at the beginning of your end step. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control that didn't attack or entered the battlefield this turn. Untap those creatures. Mm -hmm. um this is interesting um this is another one you actually put a lot of the cards on here for this one uh my list was like eight cards yeah for sure um, so what are your thoughts with the fifth, fifth doctor what uh what are you liking about this i don't know it like it strikes me as like wilderness reclamation for creatures right like <laughs> Our audio listeners, I'm sorry for the uh, abrupt uh, audio quality dip, but uh, Miri just started rubbing her head on Ian's microphone. <laughs> yeah, my little, my little terrorist. <laughs> You're a Hellion. You're a Hellion. You have to know that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, <laughs> what I was trying to say was, uh, it's kind of like Drum Bellower in the Command Zone, in a sense, mm -hmm. right? Um, which I just think is kind of interesting. I think, uh, you know, I I wish it said every turn, right? But that's okay. I, I think it's uh, it's it's just open some interesting play pattern. Like you play a couple mana dorks. I think you you want it particularly with a green um mm -hmm. a companion. I think that's probably like the best ways to play it. And there's also a green companion that like does a bunch of nothing, but also is just a mana dork. And I mm -hmm. think that's like a perfect one two combination. Um, right. And uh, yeah, you sort of just have this like value, like ah, I'm going to tap out for maybe a big thing on my turn and then untap and hold up interaction. Cool. Like, sick. you know, it means that you can't like go to a seaborn and stuff and like attack everybody. Right. But you can still do right. some crazy stuff. And then also what's kind of funny is like if you get a seedborn or a drum bellower on top of that, this triggers at your end step. So you can be like, OK, cool. I'm going to pump my mana into something. 
uh, the doctor is going to go off my stuff on taps and then I'm going to pump my mana into it. And then if I have like a drum bell where it'll be like, okay, cool. And then I'll untap on my next turn. Right. Too, right. So it's like, like a really good Shalai deck. Yeah. 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 yeah like yeah. a really good Shalai deck. Yeah, um, for sure. Also another for sure. deck that uh, our card that would be really good is I can't think of the name of it, but Phoenix sends it to me like every now and again is it's that yeah. blue white commander that uh, from uh, new Capenna the that like counters one that he yeah, it's like, the counters really one fun. yeah uh where i actually think that's like sort of interesting in this but yeah. like yeah. you know it, it, this feels yeah. like a you could do some sort of like counters yeah. company-esque yeah. type bullshit yeah here. yeah yeah yeah. it's really cool with like grish car too right like mm-hmm. that because then like all of your creatures are getting counters and then they can all tap for mana and shit like that and it's like right. oh okay this is all this is all stuff you know <laughs> yeah um yeah, it's cute. It's definitely like a an engine style deck, and it might be like too cute, but I think it's really cool. And it it, it definitely, uh, I don't think it's been like anything like this really exists. I I don't think. I'm yeah. Not before, like in the command zone, I should say. You know, that's um, kind of how I felt about like uh like this. This feels like for you what Barbara White and the Fourth Doctor was for me. Yeah. yeah because yeah. it was very much my. It's probably nothing, but it, I feel like nothing else like that exists. So, yeah. You yeah. know. Um. No, that's really interesting. I think that is the they're doing some interesting stuff with Bant that I'm really mm-hmm. into. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Where it feels like it's kind of not what it has always been, which is mm-hmm. very refreshing. Yes. Um speaking of more Bant, the third doctor is a two two time lord doctor that costs two generic, a green and a blue, has trample. And the third doctor gets plus one, plus one for each non-creature token you control. And when the third doctor enters the battlefield, create your choice of a clue token, food token, or a treasure token. Um, it's an infinite mana outlet. <laughs> what I really like about this one. Yeah. Apart from the ability I can sing that song. Um, is that it works really interestingly with food chain. Yeah. Where you can go through the loop right make infinite creature mana right and then you can filter it back into and then you can filter it right yeah. into infinite mana of any type yeah and then filter it into infinite draws that's hot right it's really that's weird really um, hot and then no, obviously it's not it was, weird yeah. it's amazing actually <laughs> like that's yeah. actually the most compelling argument i've seen for a food chain yeah in a while. Like, it's like sultai i think is like the best food chain variant of it but you can also yeah. play like a oxide variant um and i think actually you can still play the teamer variant for sure and mm-hmm. play food chain in it um especially because like you get all the consistent access to creature tutors right mm-hmm. um and once again you get all the dock side combos um and then yeah there's there's like some just like some shenanigans you can do but like the the food chain outlet part i thought was like kind of sweet the the so not only is it a food this is like a food chain outlet and then some so what you do yeah. is you make infinite food chain mana then you yeah, yeah. filter that into treasure mana. Mm-hmm. And then you, uh, as you're doing all of this, you're also making clues so that mm-hmm. you could literally just draw your deck. That's what I said. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is another cool, like, Bant thing you could do too, mm-hmm. where, like, I could even see this as a Bant food chain deck where mm-hmm. you're kind of doing, like, you get access to the silences, you get access yep. to all those things. Yeah. You get a meal, Drevy combo. Yeah. And so you can just kind of do those things and you don't have the same issues other food chain uh, decks specifically in these colors run into of, okay, what do we do once we get the food chain thing going? It's all just right there. All you have to do is get the engine moving. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. That's really cool because then you could just play like walking ballista or some shit like that as Mm -hmm. your, you know, yeah. And if you're playing black, you can just play Thoracle, right? Like, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, well, um, I mean, even if you're like not, another... you could still play Thoracle, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you want to go the band direction, you could also play Barbara White, like you were talking about earlier, and, and have all those like saga synergies that I you actually were think about. Uh, Barbara White might be the better, or uh, this might pair better than the fourth. Yeah. Doctor. Now that I'm, I hadn't thought about the food chain thing until you brought it mm-hmm. up. But now that you did, I'm like, oh, okay. Barbara White in the in the third doctor's where it's at. I'm I'm yeah. absolutely going to be brewing that. Sick. <laughs> that I've actually never been excited to brew a deck 
like this before, but um, like specifically doing like a loam lands food chain deck just yeah, sounds yeah. rad as hell. Mm-hmm. Man, I wasn't excited about the set. I'm getting a little bit more excited about the set the yeah, more we yeah. don't talk about it. Um, the next commander we have a podcast co-host. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next commander on this list is the fugitive doctor. We talked about this a little bit earlier. She is a four four time lord doctor that costs three generic, a red, and a green. And mm-hmm. when it enters the battlefield, you investigate. Whenever the fugitive doctor attacks, you may sacrifice a clue. When you do, a target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback to generic red green for mm-hmm. the cost until end of turn. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of shit you can do with that. Yeah. Uh, so this one I think is like one of the most flexible. Um, yeah. I like it a lot in Jund. I was uh, just about to say that. Yeah. Because uh, one minute go to combat uh, in response to uh, declaring attacks. Uh, I'm going to entomb my peer into the abyss mm-hmm. <laughs> and then play it for uh, two and red green. Seems pretty yeah. good. Um, there is also, you know, any number of uh, incinder sorceries that are just kind of like insanely overcost like that. Um, the uh, team version. Enter the is, infinite. Yeah. Well, okay, so this is what I was going to talk about. The Teamer version gets the Dockside combos, right? Because right. this is a Dockside outlet. Right. Uh, the Teamer version also, yeah, as you said, gets <laughs> fucking Enter the Infinite <laughs> for, for mana, <coughs> which I think is sick. Um, it also then kind of becomes like this weird NAR set, right? Where it's like, mm-hmm. it's not as uh, not as good as NAR set because it doesn't have Hexproof or anything like that. Right. But like, you also just have a bunch of like crazy teamer spells that like you don't have in tomb, but like you have a higher redundancy of spells that are just like, Oh, well that's stupid. Why is that doing it? You know what I mean? Right. Um, also like you can get last March of the ends as well, because that card is uncounterable and like that for four mana is kind of dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like there's a lot of very, very silly. I will uh, say if I were, I, if I were okay. to, um, do this in teamer yeah. this actually may be where the companion is canine because i think having mm-hmm. that uh ward one that ward one would mm-hmm. go a long mm-hmm. way yeah so you either play stifle buddy or or, or yeah this yeah. one as well um there's also a world where you also play the other investigate commander so that you can get multiple clues right martha yeah um, that, yeah that's martha. Also a thing. that's Justin really Gaines. neat that like all of the companions have like really this is something i appreciate about the set that i haven't mm-hmm. really seen in other sets right is the good like partners right yeah always you can like file it down to like a handful Mm -hmm. of them and it's just like okay you put this one with this one and this one with this one and this one with this one whereas with this it's like there's just an assortment and they Mm -hmm. all feel like they uh add to the strategy meaningfully yeah 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 i completely agree that's just like very unique, something that mm-hmm. we haven't had. Because yeah, I think yeah. about like Malcolm Timna is mm-hmm. it's like always with that what are you putting with Timna thing? Is right, it's right. just kind of like which value engine basically mm-hmm. are you putting next mm-hmm. to this value engine? Yeah. Um, whereas with this, it's which synergy pieces are you putting together? Yeah. Yeah. And I like that about the, that. Once again, the, this design I think is just clever. I, I really yeah. enjoy it. Uh, The next card on our list is the Master Multiplied. It is a 4-3 Time Lord Rogue that costs four generic, a black, and a red, and has Myriad. Uh, The legend rule doesn't apply to creature tokens you control, and Mm -hmm. triggered abilities you control can't cause you to sacrifice or exile creature tokens you control. This is another one that uh, Ian was like, listen, I'm a butt fart. I, uh, my name's Dr. Buttfart69. Uh, I got to get this one on here, Cal. Yeah. And uh, I know you put all these like really meaningful includes of like, uh, you know, new removal spells and stuff like that. But uh-huh. I, I got to yeah. talk about the fucking master multiplied right the fuck okay. now. Um, <laughs> it's Najila. <laughs> it is Najila. 
Um, this card's awesome. Okay, it's like it is the only Rakdos card. So okay, so there's like six stuff you can do with this card and like Twin Flame and shit like that, right? Yeah. Um. So that part's like cute, right? But on its face, right, this is just a win con in the command zone in Rakdos that has never existed before. And I is think that's sick. this a <laughs> Nijila card? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, the, the, the new game is the is this the new Najila? <laughs> yeah, is this the new Najila? Yeah. Is this Najila but in less colors? Uh, yeah, because I think oh, what's the um, there's the Hellkite that makes this card a lot better too. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, um, tyrannical Hellkite? It, no, 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 no. It's um, you're asking me yeah. to know too much information off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm googling it now. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell kite courser. That's right? right. Okay. Uh, because what that does is it allows you to um, it says the exact text here. Uh, and, when it ETBs, you can put your commander from the command zone onto the battlefield, and it gets haste. Uh, return it to the command zone at the beginning of the next end step. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is like I think the cleanest. Like I know it's a six mana dragon, but still, this is the cleanest. Uh, I think this is also a stack deck. To be clear. Um, yeah. I, I I think this is like a stack deck with like dual caster twin flame combos and stuff like that. Um, but like the idea that you can inevitably just get to the master and win the game is like so sick to me. Uh, but like you play the courser, right? Mm-hmm. The master comes down. You attack. It has myriad, right? And so the reason I'm calling this an Ajila for for the audience is because uh, its static ability prevents the copies of it being exiled to the myriad ability, right? Um, so it comes down. You attack, and then there are suddenly there's a master attacking each and every person, right? Because once it says legend rule doesn't apply, right? And the it has the restriction that the triggers don't work. And then you're thinking like, oh, but the original goes back to the command zone. Yes, yes, it does, but. <laughs> the tokens have the same line of text saying that they can't be exiled so it's not like you can just kill your commander and the rest of them go away they all stay and then then next turn right you go to combat and you swing with three of them and suddenly now there are three attacking every player yeah right and as you can see by like the the i think by the third time you go to combat you win the game i'm pretty sure yeah i think that's the current one turn two turn three because that's nine four threes attacking mm-hmm. everybody yeah which usually is i mean 36 damage is 36 damage <laughs> um <clears throat> so you know i think you you can easily also play like extra combat effects uh there's stuff where like you can play like aggravated assault and like grim hireling um and just like go infinite like that uh although the new masters don't have haste but hopefully you should have enough masters that you go to combat and it works Anyways, there's a lot of like really cute synergy, extra combat stuff. Uh, and then like every every card that you have that like triggers off combat stuff, like just gets insane, right? Like once again, mm-hmm. the, the Grim Hireling thing's like insane, right? Uh, you know, every time a creature like trigger does something like that, it, it gets crazy. I, I just think this card's super freaking sick. Uh, <laughs> and it's one of those cards that's like, okay, do I have all the answers for exactly why it's broken? No. Do I think it's cracked? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, it's sick. <laughs> I don't know. This is one of those cards that I'm like, the you know, maybe at the end of the day, this is not the most competitive card in the entire world. Uh, would I like to build a deck around it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know, now that you're like the CEDH world champion or whatever, you need That's, to go back yeah. to your roots and play Belby. I can try Belby again. You know, I think yeah. you need to I go back Belby, to your roots. You need to go back to what made you who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the the real CEDH that we want. We need to be playing in this world. Is I need to go back to my Belby days. <laughs> this is what the community's been missing. Yes. In me, well, every Belby. person's like, "Yes, Ian, play a bad deck. Play a bad deck." <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, still makes top four. <laughs> Listen, uh, you know. let's let's go to the let's get out of the commanders let's look at the uh, yeah. cards i put on the list um and uh the first card here uh in the non-legendary creature section is flesh duplicant it costs two blue mana is a zero zero shapeshifter rebel and hat says you may have flesh duplicant enter the battlefield as a copy of any rebel. creature on the battlefield except it has vanishing three if that creature does not have vanishing so i, I genuinely keep forgetting it's rebel that's really funny to me they what that it's a rebel yes um 
my other favorite part about this is the fact that it's like phantasmal image without the downside. Yeah, it's scratch cracked. Like it's I, I actually am curious of your thoughts of if this is just sh- maybe straight up better than a uh, phantasmal image. I think a significant portion of the time I would feel confident in saying that. Yeah, okay. I think uh, it is really, really good. I think it provides, you know, everything you want from a clone mm-hmm. a- and more, you know, um, right. I think it's it's just the efficiency. It's the fact that it doesn't just die to a single Bowmaster's trigger, you know, yeah. like uh, that's like a really big thing, I think you know that that part is sort of not really talked about a lot about Fimage nowadays and and actually it's it's genuinely why a lot of people um like for example if you looked at the top four of the crimson lion tournament right uh all three of us playing blue farm were not playing Fimage. all three of us were playing phyrexia menorf right yeah. for me particularly it like had extra combo potential with um with the display script and stuff right right um but in general like it's just uh it, the ability for your thing to just be pinged off sucks real bad right right um and i think you know this this blue blue clone anything and like oh no vanishing three it's like have you like cdh uh three turns is infinite turns like <laughs> three three turns is like an eternity yeah honestly. like it, the the game changes so much in three turns i think most matches last about six turns i would say like good good grindy games right right uh like six seven maybe eight turns uh and because of that i think it just uh yeah it it's a card that's going to last a long time. The only downside is the blue, blue cost. And I think yeah. it's a very real cost. Right. Um, but I, I think the upsides far outweigh the, Oh no, it costs blue, blue, you know? Yeah. I, I, I tend to like this card a lot um, because of the fact uh, it specifically does things like, it, like outside of Kenrith, mm-hmm. you're able to just do your a uh, meal combos mm-hmm. you're able to do all of that stuff with yeah. a copy and i think a mm-hmm. copy that is cheaper than phyrexia metamorph is a real factual like benefit um yeah. where it can make some of that math even if it's one mana less uh mm-hmm. can make some of that math a lot easier uh yeah. so i think that this is definitely going to see play is definitely mm-hmm. a it feels like a side grade almost you know sure. what i mean it doesn't feel like it's a strict upgrade but it's yeah, also yeah. like very... i think there are going to be conversations about like is metamorph better in this situation is this one better in other situations but right. i think it, in general it's just like fimage got a lot worse in the format by this card being printed yeah um i mean and fimage we had already taken a lot of hits from Bowmasters, <laughs> yeah and then i i think this might be the card that makes a lot of people move away that are that are not Kenrith decks move away from mm-hmm. the um, right, right. Also, uh, the 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 rare Muldrotha deck will move away from. Uh, actually, <laughs> no. This doesn't even stop the Muldrotha because it you would still say it. It works exactly the same. Uh, never mind. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rip image 2023 20, 20, 20, was a was a good time. Uh, next card on the list is a card I don't know that we'll see play, but I think it's an interesting design and I wanted to talk about it. Um, mm-hmm. And that's the Flood of Mars. It is a 3-3 three, mm-hmm. three alien zombie horror creature that costs two generic and two blue. And it has Island Walk. And whenever the Flood of Mars attacks, put a flood counter on another target creature or land. If it's a creature, it becomes a copy of the Flood of Mars. If it's a land, it becomes an island in addition to its other types. So part of why I wanted to particularly uh, bring this up is because I think this is really interesting in the like stacks of your decks of the format that Mm -hmm. uh, specifically are trying to do the like humility esque things, uh, because what this does is effectively that where you can nullify a lot of people's cards. Uh, in commanders with this and then it creates a cascading effect right because when you make one you're making a copy of this one and then when that one attacks it makes another one and then everybody's just kind of dealing with all of these permanents and Mm. they're kind of encouraged to do that and so it can create a cascading effect where like uh, you can kind of nullify a lot of things on the board don't like somebody's dog side yeah well the problem is like okay so if you 
you play the flood and you attack with the flood, right? Mm-hmm. And you give a bunch of people the flood, mm-hmm. then yes, sometimes it will control threats on the board, but like what stops all of them being like, hey, Cal just flooded my commander. Let's all start flooding Cal's lands. You know right. what I mean? Well, and that's the thing is, is your, your commander or like you might die from it, but even then like you you can, they stay around. So it leaves an impact on the game, which is what's hilarious. Right. Um, so like, again, I'm not saying that I think it's playable or that you should yeah. play it. I think yeah. it's an interesting design that has yeah. like some interesting, like, yeah. Uh, what is it? Like uses. I like it specifically with Tavesh because. Yeah you the first flood i think you you attack make one of your thralls a flood Mm -hmm. and then (laughs) then you're doing two flood attacks and then like if you want to keep making tokens you can like really get out of hand and be like all right now i'm gonna make two more tokens a double flood and then you're quad flooding and then yeah i guess it's like it's very cute i don't know if it's gonna like work work but like it's really funny (laughs) yeah like i mean and that's the thing where i i'm like i don't know that it is a very like a super good uh yeah. idea but it's one of the cards that i saw and i was like this is an interesting design and i yeah. think this is like an interesting way of like because what it will do is warp the game around itself right, right. because once right. you land it in attack the game is now about the flood it's no longer about anything else yeah. other than flooded creatures huh so that's that's what I like about it. Um, yeah, I I, huh. I see that I'm slowly winning you over to this idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's a little crazy. It's a little silly. Well, and that's what I mean. Like, it's, it's like when I when I introduced it, I'm like, this isn't going to see play. It's absolutely mm-hmm. like it, it, if this was one mana less, I think you could make a really good yeah. argument for it. But at four mana. And it doesn't have haste. Like it, it takes all turn cycle. Like there are real yeah. reasons why this is going to be like not in include in every deck and why this is right. like definitely a, you build a very specific deck around it. Um, but I think it's mm-hmm. interesting from the fact that like once you land it in attack, the game is now about that. Yes, for sure. And huh. I th- I just I think that's like an interesting way to completely change the dynamic of the game. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's. I'm gonna think about that for a little bit. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's probably not there, but like, yeah. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's and it's a very at the very least. I think like, you yeah. know, if you were like, I think it's interesting to us specifically also because it like m- creates for very like. Mm -hmm. um interesting gameplay decision trees that you have to go down right right. and so like i think for us where we play a lot of games and like yeah games can get kind of samey after a while the prospect of a game getting like warped around something is that like yeah it's it definitely it changes the way you play cedh for sure and i I don't know that that's a good thing in this circumstance right from a competitive standpoint but it definitely is it's fascinating yeah right like that's kind of the idea and and that's why i wanted to bring it up because i was like there's like i said i don't know that it's good but i think it's interesting and i i love interesting um for sure uh next card on this list is uh honestly a pretty good card Uh, i'm very excited about this it's cyber conversion it's an instant that costs two blue and says turn target creature face down. It's a 2-2 two, two Cyberman artifact creature. This mm-hmm. says, hey, you see that really annoying hate bear that uh, you really need to get rid of? Mm-hmm. Hey, it's a 2-2 two, two now. Mm-hmm. Why is this better than Resculpt? So Resculpt giving somebody a 4-4 four, four mm-hmm. that has, it has evasion, if I'm correct. No, just four four. It's just four four. I I mean mm. I think it's right there, right there in the pudding. It's a f- two two versus four four. Mm. Um, granted, you can't hit uh artifacts, artifacts. which is mm-hmm. you know a real thing. But yeah, yeah. I do think in low color blue decks, having yeah. access to something that can deal with problematic creatures is yeah. very good. 
and something that can specifically deal with them in a way that makes them hard to come back is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like, I've heard a lot of people excited about this and that's the, my first thought. It keeps being that like, I, I would think I would just rather have a re-sculpt 99% of the well, time. Well, think about this, right? It's specifically mm-hmm. good with commanders because yeah. re-sculpt, you re-sculpt a commander. Okay. Now you have a four, four and that commander out. Right. This, right. the commander is still on the battlefield, but it's a two, mm-hmm. two and has no abilities. So yeah. like, that's a real thing. Yeah. That, yeah. It's, like, I mean, it's, it's an instance be dark stream mutation, right? Yeah. So for commander specifically, I guess that does make sense. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's really where the value in it lies. Okay. Um, the next card is card that I think is very good. It's called don't blink. It costs a generic and a blue. It's an instant that says until end of turn, if one or more creatures would enter the battlefield from exile or after being cast from exile, their owners shuffle them into their libraries instead. And it also has cycling for two generic. This is a new addition to the containment priest family of cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very welcome addition. I, I like that we're getting more of this effect, especially in commander. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but this, like when I see this card, I don't like, the song it's like don't speak but it's just don't blink i know <laughs> and i don't know why that is just in okay. my head with this card <laughs> when it's the same thing with like dig through time or anytime i see dig yeah. through time i sing you know if i could turn back time but it's if i could dig through time <laughs> dig through time yeah that's if i good. could dig through time <laughs> so um yep but yeah okay. don't blink new containment priest good stuff the good card Add this, add this to your rotation of containment priest effects. I, I will say, because I know, <laughs> um, Hallow, um, no, um, Hallow the other one, the white one, Hallow Moonlight. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that cantrips, I guess, right? It does cantrip. Hmm. I mean, I, I think the there. I, I made a post about this before, mm-hmm. where yeah. I think there is a realistic, like, there is a number of a assortment of. Like if you're mm-hmm. playing like Tivit, right? And you're trying to shut right. down the Kinnons and the, those things, right? Yeah. There is a number of, because you have Miscolor, Don't Blink, uh, Hollow Moonlight, and Containment Priest that mm-hmm. you can all right. deal with that in some regard. And mm-hmm. there is a number that is the correct amount of those four to play. Um, yeah. And it's somewhere between like two and four. So <laughs> the answer is as long as you're still playing Graft Digger's Cage, you're doing better than most <laughs> yeah um so that's one of the things i do like about don't blink over something like hollow moonlight is i do think in a deck like tivit it has a little bit more utility because of mm-hmm. the fact that not only does like uh, you can it draws on its own without needing to do a thing you, you don't need to cast mm-hmm. it to get the draw um but also the fact that it pitches to forces I think is a huge advantage in a yeah. control deck. So I, yeah. I, I think I like this over hollowed moonlight in that shell specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, pitching the force is good. Turns out <laughs> seems that will get a lot of cards into a lot of decks. Yeah. Uh, speaking of surge of brilliance, it is a instant that costs a generic and a blue. That has foretell that is a generic and a blue and what it does draw a card for each spell you've cast this turn from anywhere other than your hand. So Mm -hmm. uh, this card you requested and I wasn't I wanted to talk about it originally, but I didn't put Mm -hmm. it on because I was like, oh, that's too cute. Um, And so when you requested it, I was like, "Okay, cool. We can talk about this cute card because it it is kind of win more, right? Like. Here's why I like it. Okay. Um, I think in general, people see this and they go breach, right? Mm-hmm. With Underworld Breach, it's very win more, mm-hmm. I think. Um, where I like it is some atypical decks. Uh, so specifically, I think it's actually really, I really like it in Esper. Um, mm-hmm. Because what happens a lot of the time is breach is just so much more incomparably better uh than Yagmas will like just yes. this period in, in the current meta. And I like the idea that like 
post Nas, this kind of becomes like really, if you, you got to really squint at it. Right. But like this kind of becomes your breach brain freeze. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think they're like, please don't directly compare the two. Right. But the whole point is you don't have access to breach. So you don't need to directly compare the two. Right. Mm -hmm. And the idea being like, you can be like, okay, uh, you know, pedal, dark ritual, uh, whatever, you know, ritual, 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 dramatic reversal, blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Um, and then do the same thing from your graveyard, make a bunch of mana, and then be like, okay, cool. Now search your brilliance, draw six. Mm -hmm. I think that's like a thing. Um, yeah. And then if you like, yeah, there's, I, I don't know. I just think it's, it's interesting. Um, it does also like, there is a world where it kind of acts like your brain freeze. If you want like a second version of that effect, right? Cause if you like cast led a couple times out of there, use it to draw six, then this goes in your graveyard, right? So you can play the LED, draw a bunch of cards, like crack the LED, pitch all the cards that you just drew off of this, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's like almost a world where this is a a brain freeze esque effect. It, it definitely like is different, right? Yeah, it is netting you uh, less cards, but I it's think adding redundancy. I think is which it's adding which redundancy. Is the important yeah, 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 um, yeah. Um, I, and then there's also commanders like Elsha specifically. I really like this card where you're just like. Okay, let me cast a bunch of cards off the top of my library. Fuck, I finally hit a land. All right, <laughs> uh, so one in blue, draw seven. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, and like that's a that's one of those decks that like you can storm off at instant speed off the top of your library, right? right? And like this card becomes very attractive in a deck like that. Something I really like with this card, and it's a thing mm -hmm. that like I have been uh you know, I've I, I've talked about this with you a little bit, and I don't remember I think I talked mm -hmm. about this on the last podcast. Yeah, is yeah. uh this idea of like traditional storm, right? Mm -hmm. Of playing mm -hmm. the like we're playing the yeah, rituals yeah. and the pa past and flames and the, all that good old school mm -hmm. bullshit. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in a deck like that, it like even with breach is it's still yeah. just very interesting and compelling mm -hmm. and can be a way to just help you chain things together. Right. Yeah. Um, I also think this is like a card that like makes a Ruth slightly more viable as well. Yeah. Like that's yeah, think about insane that this card is in that deck, right? Oh, like you play wild. three things out of exile, right? Or like even even just three or four, right? Mm -hmm. Suddenly you're like, okay, for one in a blue, I'm now gonna draw eight with a Ruth, right? Like right. and then do it again sometime probably. Right. <laughs> uh that's so that like that part's pretty freaking sick, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very, very, very good. Um mm -hmm. I am it's one of the things that I again it really needs to be in the right shell but again yeah. like it, it's something that it's like it, it it's funny the more we get these things and the more I'm around them the more I want to play these like stormy type decks yeah. that aren't just Nas decks you know what I mean like I would kind of want to yeah. play these like all right you got to the, the 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 spell version of Sisse right the spelly puzzle right. decks and I, mm -hmm. I, it's nice that there is a new addition to the, um, like, the, the here, is a, <laughs> here is yeah. a good front of the box guide mm -hmm. to help figure out the puzzle, right? Yeah, um, agreed, agreed. Speaking of front of the box guides to solve mm -hmm. the puzzle, uh, this is our last card on the list. Mm -hmm. It is Decaying Time. How did, now, sorry, just to be clear, how did that relate to what you just said? Oh, well, well, let me read the card and explain it to you. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Decaying time loop is an instant that costs three generic and a red. Yeah. That uh, says discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards. It also has retrace. This is a instant speed wheel, which is really good. Mm -hmm. But you're it, it's again like wheels tend to be in those puzzle store like the stormy puzzle. Oh, oh okay. Tends yeah, yeah, yeah. to be the front of the box here's a solution or a hint mm -hmm. at how to solve the puzzle uh sort mm -hmm. of thing uh which is kind of a bad analogy but i'm sticking with it um <laughs> but but okay. yeah it's decaying time loop uh the fact that this has retrace is fucking stupid the fact um, that this has retrace is fucking stupid it's so <laughs> dumb <laughs> like it's, actually it's absolutely what makes this card playable it's it, it, insane it's like okay cool i played a couple cards they, they didn't really do it for me all right let me just wheel my hand again it's like okay yeah uh, yeah and like yeah oh you're getting less cards and you use four mana for it sure that's not like at the point where this card is relevant that does not freak and think about this like <laughs> host nod right <laughs> 
Because like yeah. post Nas, it's just like even better. So it mm-hmm. could let's let's say you're post Nas, you play all your rocks out of it, and then you but you didn't hit your breach and you didn't hit a tutor, which you know what are mm-hmm. the odds? But let's say it happened. Sure, and sure, you, sure. You, you cast this discarding yeah. one of the 17 lands you drew that you can't do mm-hmm. anything with and mm-hmm. now you have oh hey there's the win and so yep. this is just this is a nice and it gets so many more cards than wheel of fortune or wheel of misfortune mm-hmm. or any of that bullshit in, in that scenario yeah. yeah yeah in that scenario but uh it, its floor is a lot lower its ceiling is ridiculous um, yeah i like it a lot in a proactive deck i think yeah. a manual storm deck is another great place for mm-hmm. it right like uh turns out i don't know if you you know this but the color that it's in red um <laughs> there's there's a card that cares about the graveyard quite a lot but i'm not sure if you've heard of it galleon uh mm-hmm. it's called uh, underworld breach <laughs> and, oh really uh, yeah, yeah yeah so the idea is that like this breach card it cares about things in the graveyard so okay. if you put more things in the graveyard it makes it makes the breach card the one we were just talking about um yeah. a little better yeah Wow, that's a really novel thing. I think more people should play that card. <laughs> Did I lay that on just thick enough? I, yeah. I was really trying. <laughs> you know what's fucking wild is I remember uh, when Breach was yeah. spoiled. And yeah. I remember me and Cobblepot specifically de- like talking about that card and being like, because I, I remember like, like tweeting about it. Of, mm-hmm. This card is better than Yogmoth's will. And yeah, yeah. everybody on Twitter is just like, you're crazy. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. uh, what was it? Cobblepot was like, no, this is better than Yogg will, guys. Seriously. And people are like, you're crazy. <laughs> and then, you know, three years later, uh, yeah. how many people play Yogg uh, Yeah, exactly. Like two. <laughs> and even then, they're almost off it, right? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, but yeah, decaying time loop, nice addition to the family of mm-hmm. uh, wheels, but a, a, an expensive wheel that can uh, like justify its casting costs. I feel like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I think it, uh, it, it, like, it, it, like, it does something pretty unique, right? And like, uh, don't get me wrong. Like I think we're you know it's very safe to say you and I are very aware of the downside of like oh yeah, but then you have one less card every time because you cast the thing from your grave. Sure. Like like yeah. yes, it is that is that is real. This does exist. I I am here verbally recognizing this on camera. <laughs> card is still really good. <laughs> so uh, card is still very good. Yeah, it, it's. I'm not saying cut Wheel of Fortune. I'm not saying cut Windfall. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying stop playing fucking Wheel of Misfortune. You don't need to. Yeah we have the technology yeah. uh also like for, for those um you know uh, trying to play cedh in uh not proxy friendly spaces and, very good um, who, who would like to have a time twister like effect and not actually have time twister I or a wheel is, of fortune uh, effect right like yeah um, yeah either, either way right like a, a a wheel effect that is necessary it's it definitely does not do the same thing but it does work right yeah. Yeah, it absolutely does. So mm-hmm. it is uh, really exciting. I, that's another episode I feel like we should do is is talking about uh, how do you build your decks when uh, how do you make adjustments for when you can't use proxy for proxy lists. Yeah. yeah, because uh, that's a thing that I feel like I do a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I feel like it's a case by case basis, which makes it like a tough generalized topic. Yeah, to do right. But there's like, some like general, uh, you know, like some general pieces to that of like, you know, some cards that I tend to lean towards. And this would be Mm -hmm. on that list of like, you know, I don't have a wheel of fortune. Well, I've got decaying time loop and that definitely does some amount of help. (laughs) It does a comparable thing on a technical level. Yeah. So, but uh, overall, what were your thoughts on the set? Um, You know, I definitely think I was, I was more positive than you were about the set in general. You were. Um, I, I think it's it's quite clever. I think it's like the the design for the set is really interesting. I think there's a lot of choices that were made that were very good ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a lot of really unique card designs. I think the <clears throat> you know a lot of people were bitching about all the stuff that's like the legend rule doesn't matter. And I'm like, first of all, it's it's a sci-fi time travel set. Right. Like yeah, in the sci-fi set, probably making clones of people is probably going to be a theme. 
Right. And like, yeah, I, like, I don't know, just the stuff like that always like. Kind also, of have you watched the show, like, right? Like, yeah. Like, also, have you watched Doctor Who? Um, um, but like, it, you know, I think there's a lot of interesting design pa- spaces. Like some of the designs are so clever, like the 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 master card we were talking about earlier. Just I, I like, mean, honestly, I think like River Song is maybe like the prototype yeah. for this is really well designed and interesting. Yeah. Because yes. it, it just like you can it like creates a whole new genre around itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, I like the idea that like the weird cards are in the sci-fi set because yeah. they're like, that's just good design, right? Like right. It, it is a good design to be like, Oh yeah, it's, it's right. The weird cards should be here because it's supposed to be like, Whoa, we're traveling through time We're we're bending reality. Right. Like right. those things are all supposed to be a part of it. Right. And it's a good thematic choice. Right. Um, I, I like, I don't know. I'm just, I have nothing but like really good stuff to say about the set. I think yeah. for CEDH, yeah. it's, it's going to be one of those sets that we like, someone's going to be doing the friends for everything. We're like, you know, there's still mm-hmm. people who bring friends forever decks to tournaments nowadays and like play them. Right. There's still people who uh, are going to be making doctor companion mm-hmm. combinations for years to come. Right. Yeah, I'm going to be I think, making a third doctor and Barbara deck yeah. tomorrow. Uh. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I got very excited to talk about the third doctor as well. I think that one's pretty sick. Um, I'm, and like, there's a bunch of these decks uh, in the same way that like you saw us misread the 12th doctor earlier. Right. right? I think people are going to misread things in the opposite direction and be like, oh, this card's so limited. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I did right. with the third doctors. Originally, I read yeah. it and I was like, oh, that's fine. And then yeah. you were like, no, it's a food chain outlet. And I was like, oh, it's a food chain outlet. And I was like, OK. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you're in, uh, you know, a color with like white where you can protect yeah. it, I'm super into it. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. No, I I. So I, I think my opinion on this set is very similar to my opinion about the Lord of the Rings set with the caveat that uh, the, the major difference is, is we don't have a card in this that is this is going to make our format miserable, right? Yeah, there, there so, isn't but, a yeah. specific there's you no know, bow masters. Yeah, <laughs> there's no bow masters in this. Uh, But one of the things that I really, really like about universes beyond across the board, uh, whether Mm -hmm. it's in a secret lair, whether it's in these types of sets, is it is these this is where designers get to flex. And I Mm -hmm. fucking love it is because Mm -hmm. this is where designers get to show you how good they are, because top down design is when designers Mm -hmm. really shine. Yeah, you know bottom up sure. sets where it's like okay these are mechanics and blah 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 and we're all fitting this around yep. it like yep. those are all good and those are really great yeah. but like think about like new kamigawa where it was top mm-hmm. down think about theros yeah, sure. where it was top down those are mm-hmm. the really good memorable sets and yep. that's why I what i love about this it's distinct it has it has a it has a thing that makes it unique makes it its own yeah. right and i think that's and I, I, I like honestly, Lord of the Rings set they killed it. The yeah. Warhammer deck they killed it. Uh, you know, are are they making the most broken CEDH staples every single set? No, I don't want them to. Yeah, <laughs> right. Are they making some CEDH playable commanders that like have some unique play patterns? Are they making some interesting interaction pieces? Yeah, that's the shit that we want. Yeah, right? like that's, exactly that is the stuff that we are going to get excited about. Right, yeah. and um, I think you know people who are like clamoring to like have the format broken every set or just asking for a different type of uh, of game than i think a lot of cdh players are looking for you know yeah i I also just think (laughs) that people who think that the format is boring need to play just just change the colors you're playing a little bit and then yeah yeah, just play a different deck for a hot minute yeah Yeah, like it's it's you know i'm i did that for a really long time right like or i was playing just guy for a really long time and then i was like this is boring Mm -hmm. and now i'm playing you know a different deck and, and so it's yeah. just like and also like this set gave us a few like kind of cute manual storm options which yeah. i'm a big fan of. yeah i really like so, that like, manual storm is getting more love it feels yeah like. i do too because it's 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 playing at a deficit right like yeah. it is really really behind unfortunately with the current meta game so yeah. i just want uh, to be able to play manamorphos in a storm deck again that's really all yeah. i'm living for uh yeah Let's just build the address. We'll have fun. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. God damn it. I'm brew it right after the third doctor. Uh, so with that being said, uh, Ian, you're about to go off to New York Comic Con. 
right now. But uh, after that, uh, what else are you doing? Yeah, so the week after that is the the Mox Masters Invitational. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go try and go three for three for tournaments this month. Yeah. <laughs> uh it's it's you know been a year in the making. It's a tournament I'm very excited about. I have no idea what I'm playing and it stresses me out a little bit. Uh, you know, I would love to be able to be like, hey, uh, three tournaments, three weeks new deck every time um i might do that i might play a deck i played before you but should play Arden no, chrome no you'd have to actually give me money and i don't think you have the money that you would need to give me <laughs> right, to play that deck in that tournament see but if you really want to be the goat mm-hmm. if you really want to be the goat you got a cleveland cavaliers this bitch you gotta I, you gotta I'm, walk up there and have jack shit and beat the fucking f- warriors man you gotta <laughs> there so I'm I'm the kind of person who you can be like uh you know do it you won't but like about something I actually get excited about right the yeah. the no balls argument does not work on me <laughs> <laughs> no, no 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 I totally get it um but yeah so uh I I'm also I believe going to be at Mox Masters and uh Same. so we're going to be doing that and then uh mm-hmm. after that there's uh top deck thing down mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh Mikey's yep. been in my ear trying to get me to go to that. So we're yep. gonna try. Um mm-hmm. but uh yeah. So uh where can people find you? If they want coaching from the uh from the twisty fisty. <clears throat> That's my name. <laughs> yeah Maybe if you would like Ian to- Twisty Fisty Flanners. Oh god. Uh yeah if you'd like to uh receive coaching from the two-time time twister champion uh you can head over to youtube.com slash comedian mtg check out all of my content there uh that is not here on the mind sculptors uh you can also in the description of my videos find all the places where you can contact me but you can also check out uh comedian mtg at gmail.com you can hit me up on twitter or discord any of those places you can even tag me in the mind sculptors discord if that you if you're really desperate and i'll message you on discord yeah uh but yeah find me in any of those places and uh cdh coaching has been dope lately gameplay has been awesome yeah and uh you know i i think at this point uh yeah i've done enough winning in in this uh in this format where people can be like yeah it makes sense i would learn from this person so yeah come uh come, come here more i just the, the reason i was laughing just then is i, I realized yeah. that twisty fisties sounds like a, a, a sex you such. just put that together yeah <laughs> it came out of alan's mouth and your immediate mouth like well was he's to like, double yeah. double fisty twisties and yeah. i was just like oh you're double fisting and when i said uh twisty um, when i said twisty fisty was yeah, uh, that's when together yeah that's when you're i like, like wait a minute this was dirty <laughs> wait a minute this was a sex joke the whole time <laughs> oh my god You've done it, Cal. I'm really proud of you.